Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem from AMC 12, which is American Mathematics Competitions. So usually uh, this is a test that 12th graders or younger students take in the United States. There are a lot of good problems. You can find some books on Amazon or other websites. It's a really good math competition. And by the way, this video is not sponsored by them, but I just wanted to solve this problem because I think it kind of fits our channel and the basic stuff that we've been doing. Anyways, so we have a complex number z, which is equal to i times its conjugate. Remember, z bar is the notation for the conjugate of z. And its absolute value is equal to 5. So we're going to find all complex numbers that satisfy these two equations. In other words, we have a system of equations. Let's get to work. Now, in general, how do you solve for a complex number if the solution is not very straightforward right away? Like here, can you just put z and z bar together and try to solve for z real quick or from here? Not really. You need to do substitution. And one of the best methods is replacing z with something like a plus bi. You could also use x plus yi, but since this channel is called a plus bi, let's just use this one. So now, if z is equal to a plus bi, what is z bar, which is the conjugate of z, right? The complex conjugate. It is a minus bi. What about absolute value of z? Well, absolute value is related to z and z bar. If you remember, when you multiply z and its conjugate, the result is always a real number. And it's actually the absolute value squared. I don't know if we talked about that property in general, but we could write this. The absolute value of z squared is the same as z times z bar. Or you could also write this as the absolute value is the square root of z times z bar. Okay? But you got to be careful when you multiply z and z bar, could you be getting a negative answer? Something to think about. You don't because it always gives you a sum of two squares, which is a squared plus b squared. Awesome. Now, we're going to plug in everything, and then we'll solve for z, or a and b. So, replace z with a plus bi, and then replace i with i, of course. And then z bar is going to be a minus bi. Let's go ahead and work on this equation first, and then we'll get to the second. Let's distribute. We get a i minus b i squared. Remember, anytime you see i squared, you can replace it with negative 1, right? So this can be replaced with negative 1, giving us a i plus b or b plus a i. b plus a i is a better version because it is in the standard form. So we got something interesting, a plus b i equals b plus a i. So what do you know about the equality of two complex numbers? We do know that their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. And both of these have to be satisfied. So this means A equals B and B equals A. But A equals B implies B equals A, so we don't need both of them. We just need A equals B. Great. This gave us a really nice relationship between A and B that are equal. Now we're going to work on the second equation. Absolute value of Z is 5. And as you know, absolute value squared is equal to this. So absolute value of Z is equal to square root of a squared plus b squared, which is real part squared plus imaginary part squared. And this is equal to 5. Great. Let's go ahead and square both sides because we need to get rid of the radical, right? We want to solve for a and b, and we do know a equals b, which is nice. And now this gives us, after squaring both sides, a squared plus b squared equals 25. Now, I can go ahead and replace b with a because b equals a. And that gives me a squared plus a squared equals 25, which means 2a squared equals 25, which means a squared equals 25 divided by 2. Great. So we want to get the value of a from here, but there are two values. Remember, there are two numbers whose square equals 25 over 2. Those numbers are square root of 25 over 2 and its opposite right? So there are two values. Does that mean there are two b values? Yes, because remember a equals b, so whatever a is, b is going to be the same. So let's just find a in the simplest form, not worry about the b until the end, and then we're just going to use that to find b. We're not even going to use it. It's just going to be the same thing. 
So, how do you simplify this? Square root of 25 over square root of 2, and then multiply by conjugates. You'll get, uh oh, wait a minute, square root of 25 looks familiar. Isn't that 5? Yes, it is 5 root 2 divided by 2. So the other a value, you could call this a sub 1 and a sub 2 if you want, if this is confusing to you. Then the other one is going to be negative 5 root 2 over 2. Since b is going to be the same, so we got the following values. b is equal to 5 root 2 over 2 if a, a is equal to that. And otherwise, b is equal to negative 5 root 2 over 2. And this is like a pair. And remember, we are supposed to find z, not just a and b. Of course, a and b give us z. But let's go ahead and put it together. Remember, z is equal to a plus bi as a complex number, right? And since a and b are given with those values, z sub 1, I'm just going to write it, is 5 root 2 over 2 plus 5 root 2 over 2i. And z sub 2 can be written as negative 5 root 2 over 2 minus 5 root 2 over 2i. In other words, there are two solutions that satisfy this equation, and these are the values. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.